There are a couple of ways to open the camera application. The first is from the lock screen where you can swipe from right to left. If you've already unlocked your device, then you can open the camera application directly. Or from the control center, there is another camera application button there. And also if you want to open the application with some different settings, you can force touch on the camera app to either take a selfie, record video, or record slow-mo. And of course, take a photo. Obviously you can take a picture by using the big shutter button at the bottom here, but you can also use the volume rocker here to take a picture. If you're going to take a picture by landscape, make sure that the volume rocker is at the top, or else when you try and transfer your pictures to a computer, they may be upside down. Your iPhone camera will use autofocus to decide which subject is best to focus on, but you can change that by tapping on different objects in the frame to refocus the camera. If you wanted to fix on an object, you can press and hold, and that will bring up a yellow box and also say AEAF lock. And now, no matter where I change my camera, it will keep focused on that object. If you want to turn this feature off, just tap on any part of the screen. To manually change the exposure of your shot, you can tap on the screen and this will bring up a sundial, and then you can swipe up or down to change the exposure when taking a shot. Tap on the screen again to put the exposure back to default. You can use burst mode to capture the perfect shot if you want to by simply holding on the shutter button. And that will continue to take pictures as long as you hold onto the shutter button. When you go to your photo gallery, you will see a burst mode photo taken by it saying burst mode and how many photos it took. And also a select button down in the bottom here. And if you tap that, you can then swipe through all the pictures you've just taken, select one, tap done, and then it will ask you whether you want to keep all your burst shots or only keep the ones you've selected. While we're on the subject of burst mode, it should be noted that if you turn on the timer, this will automatically put your camera into burst mode. So if I set the timer to three seconds, take some pictures, it automatically takes 10 burst photos. The iPhone camera includes an option called Live Photo, whereby it captures one and a half seconds of video before and after capturing the image. In order to enable this, tap the white dot in the top here, which will turn yellow and then Live will appear on screen. Now if I start doing some actions in front of the camera and press the shutter button, it will record both the video and an image. Now if I go to the gallery, you can see that's the picture it's captured, but then if I force touch it, you'll be able to hear video and audio. Just bear in mind that this will take up more space on your storage. As strange as this may sound, none of the settings can be accessed through the camera app itself. You have to back out and go into settings and scroll down to photos and camera. The actual camera options are at the bottom of the screen and include being able to turn a grid on or off, changing the recording video quality which you can go to 4K at 30 frames a second, and also slow motion which you can change to 120 or 240 frames per second. The bottom option is whether you want to keep the normal photo from a high dynamic range photo. This is where several photos are spliced together to give you a better contrast and colours in certain settings. If I go to the camera application and make sure that HDR is turned on and then take a picture, if I then look at the gallery, the, we can then see that this was the HDR photo that was taken, but it also kept the normal photo that was taken with it. If you're wanting to add some colour or indeed take some away, then you can use the quick filters in the top right hand corner to do things like mono or various other filters. Simply tap on one to choose a filter and of course along the bottom we have these six different camera options which include time lapse, slow-mo, video, photo, square photo for taking pictures on Instagram and the panorama. If you want to take raw photos, you can't do it through the native iPhone application, but you can do it with free photo applications from the App Store. One such application is simply called RAW. I will leave a link for it in the video description, and it also includes some interesting features such as manual focus. Anyway, you can simply take a picture, then go to the photo gallery on the application, and share that to your camera roll, and what this will do is put a DNG file on your iOS device which you can then transfer to your computer and then edit as a raw photo. Just bear in mind that they do take up a lot more space on your device. The dual lens on the iPhone 7 Plus allows you to do a feature called portrait mode where you can take pictures and blur the background through shallow depth of field or bokeh. 
Now you can't do this hardware wise on the iPhone 7 but you can do it with software, again a free application and in this particular example I'm going to use Tada. So when you launch your application and choose a picture you can go to the blur option and then move the green circle around the object that you want to keep in focus while blurring everything else and there are options down here to change the amount of blur and the range to get the blur effects that you want so although it is artificial and it will never be as good as doing it on the iPhone 7 Plus you do kind of get the same effect and if we go to our photo gallery to 